Hello folks and welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about keloids or irritation bumps when they happen on our piercings. If you've ever healed any piercings before or you have friends who have, you've probably been there, something happens during the healing process, maybe you bump or snag it, maybe you sleep on it wrong, maybe your little brother hits you in the head with a football, Whatever the cause is, you wake up one morning and there's this bump on your piercing. And in most folks' cases, you're kind of freaking out. What is this bump? What's going on? What's happening? If you go on the internet or you talk to anyone in the comments section on TikTok or Reddit, they're going to tell you that you have a keloid and there's all sorts of weird stuff you need to put on your piercing to get it to go away. Well, today, I'd like to talk about what a keloid actually is, if those little bumps on your piercings are keloids, and just a little bit more information about them. Now to start, we really need to define keloids and irritation bumps. Irritation bumps are bumps that can happen on a piercing at kind of any time throughout the healing process, and they can even sometimes occur on healed piercings. They're small to medium sized areas of raised tissue that can, that can vary in appearance from reddish to pinkish, from very wet looking to very dry with exfoliating skin. They can have some hyperpigmentation and some darkness to them. They can also have a lot of pale exfoliating skin on them. They may form entirely around the piercing or they may form only on one side. Many times they're not painful at all, but sometimes they can feel a little tender or uncomfortable, and they can also be accompanied by some secretions, often a clear off-white or off-yellowish color, or dried crust and debris around the piercing. These photo examples have all been of irritation bumps, which are relatively common on piercings and happen for a number of reasons that we'll get into later on in this video. But what about keloids? Because many of us see the word keloid used for all of these little bumps that I just showed you. Well, keloid scars are pretty different. They look a little bit more like this. Or like this. Keloids are a unique form of scarring as a result of an overgrowth of granulation tissue and collagen at the site of a healed or healing wound. They tend to be firm and rubbery feeling. Sometimes they can be shiny. They can vary in appearance from one person to the next and from one skin tone to the next. Anywhere from a dark brown to a red in color. Now keloid scarring is benign, but they can often be accompanied by itching, tenderness, sometimes swelling, and even a change in the texture of the skin on and around the keloid. Current science believes that keloids have a genetic hereditary trait to them, meaning that they tend to run in families. If you have keloiding disorder and form keloid scars, it's very likely that other people in your family do so as well. Now notice that I said keloiding disorder there. That is because keloiding is really a disorder. It's, it's a very unique form of scar tissue that's affected by collagen matrices and collagen growth at the formation and healing of a wound. We know this because keloids very often get misdiagnosed as hypertrophic scars, which can be also thick, raised, dense looking scars that most often form after surgery or after burns. But we've noticed that there's a difference on a cellular level when we look at hypertrophic scars and keloids. In more recent years, doctors have been doing biopsy testing on both types of scar tissues, and they've noticed differences in the collagen form matrix and collagen matrices of these scar tissues that allow them to denote a very large difference between keloiding and hypertrophic scars. There are some really major clinical, histological, and epidemiological differences between hypertrophic scars and keloids, some of the most notable being that hypertrophic scars occur in 40-70% to 70 of people after surgery and almost 90% of people after experiencing a severe burn. In comparison, keloids form in only about 6-16% to 16 of cases, and there is a heavy leaning towards keloiding forming in folks of African American descent. Some studies show that keloiding may have not only a genetic component, but may be related to melanin content in the skin as well. When hypertrophic scars form, they tend to be completely random and form regardless of race, gender, age, or medical background. Keloiding is not nearly as randomized, and again, we see it running in families, and we see it predominantly in folks of African American descent. So there are some very key differences between these two types of scarring. 
You might also hear hypertrophic scar thrown around in piercing, and while hypertrophic scars can form as a result of piercing, they're honestly incredibly rare, and keloids are even rarer. That's right, just a little reminder comparison, here's what an irritation bump looks like, and here's what a keloid looks like. There is a massive difference between these two things. Keloid scars tend to be very large, they tend to extend very far past the initial wound, and just have a very distinct appearance, whereas these little irritation bumps that we get on our piercings from time to time look nothing like that. Now it's really important that we understand the difference between an irritation bump and a keloid because the solution for either is vastly different. Keloids need to be surgically removed, and even if they are removed by surgery, there's no guarantee that they're gone for good. Keloids have a very high rate of regrowing and returning after surgery, and sometimes need multiple surgeries coupled with injections, topical scar treatments, and a lot of work to get them to go away permanently. Irritation bumps can be resolved typically very easily by getting to the root of what's causing the irritation on your piercing. Now I feel really strongly in talking about this because I see so many piercers online who claim that they can cure keloids with this magic ointment, or this magic oil, or the right jewelry, and that is not how that works. <laughs> If we could cure keloids with some kind of like topical ointment or oil or something, um, that would be amazing. We would literally change thousands of people's lives. We would make huge medical differences for survivors of burns and fires, for people after major surgeries. Um, it's not, it's not the case. And a lot of piercers do it just to take advantage of clients who are struggling with irritation bumps and desperate for help and convince them that what they have is a keloid and that particular piercer has the magic cure that's gonna fix it. So please don't get taken advantage of by these piercers. If what's going on with your piercing doesn't look like this, it's not a keloid and you shouldn't listen to a piercer that tells you they can fix it. And if you do have something on your piercing that's looking like this or is not looking like a standard irritation bump, see a dermatologist or a doctor. Piercers are not the people who can handle taking care of keloids. That requires, again, a medical professional and usually surgery. Now when it comes to irritation bumps, that is in the wheelhouse of piercers, and that's when you should reach back out to your piercer and let them know what's going on. See, our jobs aren't over just because we did your piercing and sent you home. Our job is also to help you heal your piercing, so we want you to reach back out to us if you're having any issues, if you're having any bumps, or if you need any help with the healing process. It's literally part of our job to help you with that. If you do have an irritation bump, our first step is going to be figuring out the cause of the irritation. Sometimes it's really easy. Let's say you have a big bump on your nose piercing, but you wear makeup every day for work and you've been wearing makeup right around your nose piercing for the last couple of weeks. Well, makeup can be really irritating to a healing body piercing, and that could definitely be the source of your bump. We would have you discontinue using makeup around the piercing, maybe follow a slightly more strict aftercare routine, and that would likely allow the bump to clear up. Now, let's say you have really bad seasonal allergies and you've been blowing your nose a whole bunch. That can cause your nostril piercing to get irritated too. In that instance, it's probably gonna stay irritated until your allergies clear up. So you may need to go start taking some antihistamines, taking better care of the piercing, and you might just have to wait out the spring or the fall or whatever season is causing and triggering your allergies. If you were pierced with something lower quality and your body is having a reaction or a sensitivity to the metal, then we swap you to something high quality and implant grade, and a lot of times the bump goes away. And then sometimes we have a bump on our piercing because the piercing was just done incorrectly. Maybe it's crooked, maybe it's at a bad angle, or maybe you just didn't have the anatomy for this piercing to begin with. If that's the case, sometimes the only thing we can do to correct that bump is to remove the piercing. And I know that's a bummer and really disappointing, but it's better than ending up with this big lump on your ear that doesn't look very nice. I wish I could make a video and tell you exactly what to do to get rid of your bump, um, but I can't do that because without knowing what is causing your bump, I don't know what to suggest for you to do. If you have a bump on your nose right now because it's pierced horribly crooked, not wearing makeup is not going to fix that bump. And if you have a bump on your cartilage piercing because you sleep on it all of the time, me putting in a different piece of jewelry is not going... Oh, 
Did we just lose power? Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's good that my camera's on a battery and my light's on a battery. I guess we just lost power. That's very annoying. I don't like that. We just lost power in my apartment complex. They are doing construction work on the street outside and have hit something they're not supposed to. So we are finishing this video on the battery backup, but the lighting uh, and framing on this is going to look a little bit different, but I don't know when the power is going to come back on and I'm determined to finish this one. So pardon the interruption. Anyway, if you have a helix piercing and it's bumpy and irritated because you keep sleeping on it, me putting in a different piece of jewelry is not necessarily going to fix that bump. So if you're struggling with irritation and bumps on a piercing, the best thing for you to do is reach back out to your piercer, reach out to a reputable piercer, and work with them to determine the cause of the irritation and the best method to treat said irritation. Because that method is going to be different person to person and piercing to piercing, and it's not gonna look the same for everyone. It really makes me sad to see so many people misdiagnosing keloids online, especially so many piercers who do it in a way to take advantage of clients who are already struggling and already in a bad situation when it comes to their piercings and just trying to try and promise them some kind of miracle cure. So I hope that by making this video and producing content like this, I can share some education about these things and hopefully help you be more informed, more educated about your piercings in your body and better able to take care of yourself. If you're interested in more information about this topic, I have a super in-depth blog post that is a comprehensive guide to dealing with piercing bumps that goes over all sorts of different factors that can cause bumps, all sorts of different treatments for bumps that you'll see recommended online that are usually not a great idea, and some tips and tricks for kind of figuring out what might be causing your bump and getting to the bottom of finding a solution. I hope this video helps, and if you'd like to see more content about healing piercings, irritation bumps, and kind of what to expect from the process, let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to sit down and chat again soon. I really hope my power comes back on soon, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.